Hi everyone, my name is Adam. So today I have an interesting uh, tutorial for you. I had received an email uh, last week and in that email, uh, the user had outlined, hey, I have this older image uh, that it's become quite washed out over time. It's a color photo, mind you, but I need to bring out the vibrance and color in that image uh, because it's, it's been lost over time. And so what I did to recreate the situation is I went over to uh, Flickr.com where in the Creative Commons section, they actually have uh, this public domain database that's provided by a bunch of different museums all over the world. And so what you can do is you can look up really old photos. So I found a photo from 1910 and we're gonna be editing that. Let's have a look at our image here. It's very old. In fact, this image was shot in 1910. It's been through a colorizing process, I'm going to guess, but its colors are so washed out and yellow that it's hard to make a real distinction at all between what we're seeing. So I would like to improve this image. To do that, we're gonna start with white balance. White balance can be found in our adjustment layers right here. What it's gonna do is it's going to adjust the yellow in this image by adding the opposite. So in this case, I'm going to reduce the temperature uh, considerably and increase the tint uh, just slightly. I will then apply a vibrance adjustment and increase the saturation a bit. I'm actually then going to apply a levels adjustment here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull the midtones slightly to the right. Uh, this will actually darken our image, but uh, just the midtones. I find applying a photo effect uh, to older images helps offset their older appearance. So here I'm going to apply a photo effect adjustment layer and select instant from the dropdown. Instant almost has a split toned appearance uh, in that it adds a darker blue color to the shadows and a slight green color to the highlights. I'm going to set the blend mode to soft light and I will set the opacity to roughly half. We're very close now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to navigate to select and luminance color range. Adjusting the luminance by clicking the check mark, I will move the slider into the sky is in the selection. Active selections are indicated by this red highlight in the preview. I'll click OK. With the selection active, let's click Curves. I'm going to adjust the curve by making the shadows darker and the highlights a bit brighter. The aim here is to make the sky uh, whiter. Uh, originally, it was kind of a little bit yellow in tint. Lastly, let's make some destructive edits to our image, uh, starting with canvas resize. The goal is to get rid of that messy border. I will reduce the size of the canvas until the border is not visible. I'm now going to duplicate my image uh, because the next adjustment we need to make will incorporate the Smart Erase Brush tool. Uh, it's a good idea to duplicate base layers so you can start again in the event of a mistake. Uh, this is mostly if we plan on saving this file as an ACDC file so that we can open it up in the future and still have that original base layer at the bottom. I'm going to select the Smart Erase brush from the top menu, click on the parts of my image that are damaged by dirt, light, water, etc. So these little streaky marks here. I'm just gonna take a moment to click on all of these. You may need to click around the streak marks to get a better smart erase outcome. So there you have it. Here is a comparison from the beginning image to our finished image. Notice the difference not only in color, but actually the contrast because of those color adjustments have increased the distinction of all the little particular elements in our image whether it be the flowers, the trees, or the actual water itself. Please like this video, subscribe, and click the bell icon.
Uh, most importantly, please comment with suggestions of what you'd like me to cover next. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.